Good morning. Welcome to the live stream of today's Mass, uh, Thursday of the sixth week of Easter. Uh, make sure, just as a reminder, to uh, turn up the volume on your device, but also in the video window. So that way you'll be able to hear best, especially because we got fans going in the background today due to the work on the AC, which God willing will be ready for us by this weekend. Amen. If you're following along with the readings, we continue with the first reading through the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Today's psalm will be coming from Psalm 98, and we continue in the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 16 through 20. Let us prepare ourselves for Mass. Good morning. And transantiphon. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, marching with them and living among them, the earth trembled, heavens poured down rain. Hallelujah. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father the Lord Jesus Christ risen from the dead be with all of you brothers and sisters coming together as God's family with confidence let us ask the father's forgiveness for he is full of gentleness and compassion Lord Jesus we came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Lord Jesus, we come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who made your people partakers in your redemption, grant, we pray, that we may perpetually render thanks for the resurrection of the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. He went to visit them and, because he practiced the same trade, stayed with them and worked, for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath, he entered into discussions in the synagogue, attempting to convince both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, 
Paul began to occupy himself totally with preaching the word, testifying to the Jews that Christ was Jesus. When they opposed him and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, Your blood be on your heads. I am clear of responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. So he left there and went to a house belonging to a man named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next to the synagogue. Crispus, the synagogue official, came to believe in the Lord along with his entire household, and many of the Corinthians who heard, believed, and were baptized. The word of the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness towards the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again a little while later, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What does this mean that he is saying to us, A little while, and you will not see me. And again a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So they said, What is this? little while of which he speaks. We do not know what he means. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Are you discussing with one another what I said? A little while and you will not see me. And again a little while and you will see me. Amen, amen, they say to you, You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve but your grief will become joy. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, a long time ago, on this day, how many remember Ascension Thursday? Come on, I know there's more of you. You're, you're, I, I see some gray hairs out there. And if there are gray hairs out there, then you remember Ascension Thursday. <laughs> today, is, today is formally Ascension Thursday. But this feast has been moved to this coming Sunday, the seventh Sunday of Easter. So now this Sunday will be will be celebrating Ascension Thursday. Why I say that, because today's gospel seems confusing. And of course, if you don't read the background, then you will say, 
What is Jesus saying? I'm not sure what he just said. Well, the gospel that was read, John, took place, Jesus, this discussion took place just before his Jesus uh, crucifixion. So that's the setting. Okay? So when Jesus starts talking to them about, well, a little while and you will not see me, and then again a little while and you will see me, he's talking in, um, we call it perhaps mysterious terms or, or a cloaked conversation, and he's trying to tell them that he is going to die and he will be buried. You won't see me. And then a little while, you will see him. Well, he's going to rise. And he's going to come back and uh, make himself, he manifest himself to them. And then they will see him. Okay? So this is what this conversation is about. This is what this gospel is about. He's telling them about, well, you're not going to see me for a while, but then you are going to see me. But then he goes on to say, well, wait now. When you don't see me, the world's going to be in a, in a festive mood. I mean, the world is going to be overjoyed. The world is going to say, we finally got rid of that guy. We're not going to be troubled with him anymore. We don't have to worry about his words. We're not going to have him telling us what to do because we know what to do. We are the rulers. Talking about the Sanhedrin. And they knew exactly what to do because they set the law. All 610 of them, 50 of them, whatever they had. Hey, we are the law setters, we are the, the law givers, don't you tell us what to do. And besides that, you are a man, you can't be God. Simple as that. Get out of here. Oh, you're not going to not gonna get out of here? Well, we'll take care of that. And they did. They did for three days. And then when Jesus came back, what happened? Whoa, let's talk about a surprise. Let's talk about the surprise of God. God is full of surprises, isn't he? Here we are, living this day and age. Or what are we talking about? The God of surprises. Things have happened in this world that we never, ever imagined. And then we see our advertising changing, and we're seeing where we are uh, being, being encouraged to be together. We are being encouraged to help each other. We are being encouraged to take notice of each other. Notice some of the ads even in the car commercials. We're not really here to sell you a car, but we are. And if you come in, our first attention isn't about what we have on the showroom floor. It's about you. All of a sudden, they're shifting their focus from this vehicle that they're trying to sell you. They're shifting their focus to you, which they should have been doing all along. And only now it took a wake-up call for them and other companies to realize we need to take care of these people because without them, we can't survive. God has given us a wake-up call. We need each other. Not materially speaking. We need each other to pray for each other, to help each other, to be compassionate to each other to realize that we have to be together because this is our world. Things are happening that we are having a hard time with. They're happening <coughs> wholesale basis, they're happening on an individual basis. But we have to realize that if we focus, and here's the deal, uh, 
God wants us to focus. He wants us to focus on Him. He said, when I come back, you are going to be amazed. But we can be amazed right now by focusing, by preparing ourselves. Remember in Lent, what were we, what were we doing? Well, we were fasting, right? We gave up something and uh, because this is a sacrifice. We did it for ourselves, we sacrificed. We were preparing ourselves for the coming of the Lord. We were preparing ourselves. But it seemed that after Easter, all that preparation went out the window. And we were back to business as usual. But now things have changed. We are after Easter. We are way after Easter. And we are still sacrificing. Because we have to. Because when you go to H-E-B, there isn't any toilet paper. Things have changed. And we're realizing who is in control here? We think we are. The Sanhedrin thought they were. And who manifests himself to us in a most unusual way? God. God manifests himself to us in a most unusual way. He's telling us here in this gospel, he will manifest himself in a most unusual way to his apostles, to his followers. He is telling us now, I am going to manifest myself in a most unusual way. I hope we are prepared. I pray that we are prepared. And I pray to Jesus, to Mary, and to Joseph to prepare us to help us accept the surprise of God. Praise the Lord. The Father has established in Christ the foundation of all our hope and the principle of our resurrection. Let us rejoice in Christ and respond together. Lord, remember your church. Lord, remember your church. Lord Jesus, through your resurrection, you entered the sanctuary of heaven to offer the blood of your own sacrifice. Lead us with you into the glory of the Father. We pray, Lord, Lord, remember your church. Through your resurrection, you confirmed the faith of your disciples and sent them out into the world. Make all bishops and priests faithful creatures of the gospel, we pray. Lord, Lord remember, remember your church. Through your resurrection, you became our peace and reconciliation. Unite the baptized in perfect communion of faith and love, we pray. Lord, Lord remember your church. Through your resurrection, the crippled man was healed at the gate of the temple. Look on the sick and reveal in them the power of your glory, we pray. Lord, remember your church. You became the firstborn from the dead, the first fruits of the resurrection. Grant to the dead who hope in you a share in your glory, we pray. Lord, remember your church. We pray now for our own intentions. Pray for my family, for all those who are suffering from this disease, and from the mental anguish that goes along with it. Let's pray. Lord, remember your church. For what else shall we pray? Any other intention?
of our brothers and sisters are joining us from home, of wherever they may be, we pray. Lord, have mercy. We place all of these, our intentions and those unspoken, in the hands of our Mary to be presented to the Father as we salute her. Hail Mary, Mary full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, the heaven and earth are full of your glory, for sacrifice. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, for sacrifice. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a 
similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith when we eat this bread. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope Gustavo our Bishop and all the clergy remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the risen Christ be with all of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Antiphon. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we ask that you give us the grace to be a welcoming community by loving one another, reaching out to those in need, and all those in your likeness, so that through your love and mercy we can be Christ for others and recreate our world with peace and justice. Renew us with the strength of the Holy Spirit through service. Heal us from every form of sin. Transform our lives by meditating on your word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I 
wish, my Lord, to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you, with the spirit and fervor of the saints. Almighty ever living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you all for coming uh, today. Thank you also for taking off your mask before you receive communion. Uh, that's the right order. Okay, you remove it or you put it under your chin and then you receive it. The other way, it's you know, it's a little more prone to accident that while you take off your mask, the the holes in your hand may fall off. So that would be the proper way. Also, thank you for removing it, not only because you're able to receive communion, but because finally I could figure out who you were. <laughs> I looked at you from a distance and I said, it looks familiar, it looks familiar, but I cannot make out the person. Are you Ma Ma Margaret? And Sylvia? Margaret, yes. All right. That's good. Thank you. And, um, that's it. Okay. So, I see Deacon uh, sweating. <laughs> and reminds me to thank you for the gift of your contribution towards the On The Way Andale capital campaign of the Archbishop, because thanks to the, um, you know, 35% of what you gave towards that campaign comes to us. And adding all that up has given us the money to replace the, uh, hmm? the 12 plus, the 12 plus units of air conditioned units of the parish. And in this time, when things are kind of down, your services, at least up until this Sunday, we'll see what happens Pentecost Sunday, but it's a, it's a blessing. I mean, I can take all the sweat. I don't mind sweat. Because we have, you have been able to contribute, you know, to having a complete new air condition system for the entire parish here and the uh, RE building. And um, in, in this time, and if without the parish having to put out any money, you know, from, from our funds that we need them for their family center and the Blessed Sacrament Chapel we'll be building. So thank you. Thank you those of you who join us. And um, so let's pray that for this weekend you will have uh, air conditioning. At least one unit should be functioning. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God, Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Master Zendra, let us go in peace to well and serve the Lord by serving each other. Thanks be to God. Oh.